Megan Murphy, a feminist, stirs controversy due to her stances on transgender people. I am Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. The Toronto Public Library has come under fire for allowing Megan Murphy to speak at an event at one of their branches. So, first question, who is Megan Murphy and why all this hubbub? First of all, she's a Canadian feminist who is heavily involved in the media. She's a writer, a journalist, she has a blog, a podcast, the whole array. But she's not your typical feminist though. People have started a label and attached it to her. It's called TERF. Don't worry though. You're not alone if you thought, what the hell does that mean? I've never heard of TERF before. It essentially translates into trans-exclusionary radical feminist. So apparently she's radical, as she was dubbed by the mass media. Here are some of her stances. First of all, she makes the argument that things like trigger warnings amount to censorship. Now, I wouldn't dub trigger warnings and or all of them to be censorial, but I do think they are stupid, especially in the university and higher education setting. Learning is not comfortable. Is it peachy to learn about the atrocities of the past? Think about it. All the crazy things that happen in human history, it's all basically a giant trigger warning. Learning about that. Is it fun to have your ideology dissected and debated? You don't hide from these things though when you are learning. You are supposed to be challenged at higher institutions right down to the core of your belief structure. This is all done in the pursuit of higher knowledge. Growth is not comfortable. Babying people and using trigger warnings couldn't be further from what these institutions should stand for. Therefore, trigger warnings are stupid. Megan also views the porn industry as inherently misogynistic. I'm not entirely on board with that notion, but I think she can make a logical case for that. It's not entirely out of the realm of reason. She also thinks that men cannot be feminist. I think that's a foolish stance. If we assume that feminism means supporting equal rights between the genders and working towards that, well, men can and have been feminist, it's very obvious. So she does have some odd views, but I wouldn't say she's an extreme feminist. I would reserve that title of extreme or extremist for people who deploy methods of violence and restrictions towards opposing viewpoints. She's not really down that alley, at least not yet. But now this is her stance that got her in the hot water. That got people all riled up. She's critical of the transgender movement and she essentially is unconvinced that biological men who claim to be women have any positive impact on feminism. She draws a line here and works on behalf of biological women and not people who simply declare and decide to join the party. That does not fly in her book. So that's her bio. Of course she has more opinions and whatnot, but that's the gist of this radical feminist that we're talking about here. So Fast forward to this week, and on Tuesday, there is an event schedule called the Radical Feminists Unite. I don't think they do themselves any favors with a name like that, but anyways, because of her stance on feminism in relation to the trans community, some groups took massive offense to the library allowing her to speak on their premise at this event. People were threatening to boycott the library, and they were screaming for the branch to basically ban her. They didn't want her talking at all, and they thought it was shameful that the library was allowing that. So campaigns were floating around on social media and whatnot, trying to punish the library for this supposed wrongdoing. They were trying to get everyone to jump on the bandwagon, to boycott them, and all that good stuff. So these organizers were really pushing the notion of hate speech and they were asking the fundamental question, how can you allow people to say such horrible things? This is where it becomes painfully clear that the organizers have lost their mind. I'll start by saying this though. Trans people deserve to be treated fairly, as anyone would. It's wrong to harass them for no reason and make them sad for their position. We don't like seeing things like the tremendously high suicide rates in that community. You should live and let live. Let them do their thing as long as it does not infringe upon you. This is not the same as saying people should blindly accept the notions being thrust upon them though. We do not live in a dictatorship. People are free to disagree with any ideology they wish any idea they wish, they are free to combat them. It is not hate speech to question whether or not feminism should apply to biological men who dub themselves women. That is a legitimate point to make and to discuss. Maybe you think it's wrong. Maybe you think it's right. It is debatable though. If your reaction to this notion is to have a meltdown and try to force upon censorship, you're going about it in the wrong way. It's not democratic. 
That is the authoritarian approach. It would be very different if Murphy, the feminist in question here, was saying something like she wants the trans community to be attacked or something like that. Like if she was directly inciting violence, I would be with you here. But all she's done, according to these articles, is try to explain her opinion, which she is entitled to, and it is debatable as to whether or not it's right or wrong. I want to hear this out. This lack of regard for free speech is appalling. There is no other way to put it. Do you want to know how you end up with lackluster and foolish ideas at the top? By not being able to challenge them. When society thrusts upon you notions that you have to inherently believe, that's a problem. By being told since your opinion deviates from the norm, we will not approach you logically. We will simply shut you down and deplatform you. We won't even challenge the notion that you bring to the table. We want you to shut up and we're going to do it forcibly. If these protesters think that she is wrong, I would like to hear them articulate why. Not just spew rhetoric, like we're hearing things from these protesters such as it's an infringement on their human rights for this lady to talk. No, it's not. How can you even think that? Grow up and form a rational argument. I'm open to hearing both sides of this. Let's let the populace decide for themselves who they support instead of trying to forcibly subjugate them to your whims and notions. When it came time for the Toronto Public Library to respond, they responded in the right way. They stated that the event is not in violation of their hate speech policy, and they have an obligation to protect freedom of speech. My respect for the organization shot up dramatically after that. This right here is 100% the correct response. Too many companies and politicians cave into the raving mob even when it violates core principles that Canada holds sacred. It is not a crime to think differently and you do not have the right to not be offended. This is seriously asinine to think because you take offense to something, it should be outlawed, deplatformed, or illegal. The library stood strong despite jokers like John Tory chiming in as well. The mayor of Toronto, that's who he is, John Tory, he said he was disappointed that the library did not cancel the event. So let me get this straight. He's mad that the library stuck to their policy and protected our freedom of speech rightfully. Get this guy out of here. He's too much of a politician. He knows his support basis and he knows what to say to appease them, regardless of whether it's right or wrong. He has to know what he's saying is asinine. Then he goes on to say that the event could be hosted anywhere. Why pick a library? We need to hold ourselves to the highest standard and listen to the valid concerns of our residents. First question, what the library did was actually hold themselves to the highest standard here. What standard is he talking about? Obviously not in their policy. He closes his ears to the residents who say allow it, but he will listen though to the loudest minority who is opposed to the idea and try to make it seem like that's the voice of the entire community. It is wrong. Anyone willing to disregard our fundamental freedoms has no place in public office and I'm very disappointed by the notions that he's putting forward here. So regardless of that, the event took place and a hundred protesters according to the Globe and Mail showed up. They were booing people and whatnot causing a ruckus, which is their right. Ironically though, exercising their freedom of speech outside the library as they are trying to shut it down from someone else. This really is the epitome of irony here. And there's actually another example of this ironic tone. Gwen Benaway, a trans poet who won a Governor General Award, says that hosting transphobic speakers that promote intolerance in Canadian society is damaging. Wow. Who's really the one promoting intolerance here? I must ask. Rejecting someone's right to their opposing opinion and calling for their head sounds pretty intolerant to me. In this backwards mentality, tolerance is a one-way street. It only matters when it benefits them. The bottom line here is really threefold. First, there is a fundamental error when trying to identify hate speech because anything can fall into that bucket. It is highly subjective. If the criteria is that it offends someone or it offends you, well, we might as well outlaw all disagreements, any debates, all of that, even learning. Because learning, you have to risk getting offended to understand the truth and grasp realities and facts that will elevate your current level of understanding. The second point, our freedom of speech protects us from tyranny. The forceful indoctrination of ideas is combated by being able to think differently, freely. You undermine that at your own peril. We can see it right here. These guys are trying to take away freedom of speech, and differing opinions because they want to force upon you an agenda. Their agenda. 
regardless of the motive, maybe they're coming from a good place, but the bottom line is it might not always be that way. They are setting a precedent and you can easily imagine how this goes wrong really fast. When you deviate from the truth and you stray from having debates to achieve that, you're left with simple tyranny. And now finally, why are we even acting like this way when it comes to a disagreement? Calling for a deplatforming and boycotting differing ideologies. Let's debate and encourage the free market of ideas so we can pick the best ones out. Not talking about problems is no solution to anything. Let's hear these arguments and really rationalize. The library 100% did the right thing in this situation by holding their ground and I hope other organizations can follow suit when it comes time to protect our liberties. Tolerance cannot be so hypocritical. Let's take the outrage down a few notches and try to return to some semblance of a mature society. The way culture has formed, especially when dealing with these differing ideas, has become super toxic not only in Canada, but also in America. Western countries are suffering right now, and as you may have noticed, I didn't really talk too much about the specific issue. I'm talking about the culture surrounding it, because that's the crux of the problem. This Megan Murphy incident is just one drop in the bucket of what has become outrage and cancel culture. This also ties into the trend of political polarization. These people are not viewing each other as individuals who are good intention, but who may believe differently. And maybe we can talk about that and try to find some common ground via intellectual debate and the exchange of ideas. Instead, the approach is, these guys are my enemy. I'm going to do everything I can to vanquish them. Tell me, how does a country prosper under these conditions? And sooner or later, we're going to be split right down the middle. 50-50 with this idea of combating the enemy. That is self-destruction waiting to happen. Even if you don't agree with Megan Murphy talking about the issues of trans women in feminism, you still have to respect the idea of freedom of speech and her right to say what she wants. You can disagree with it, you can call it a bad idea, you can give your take on it, but trying to de-platform her is a slimy tactic and it's not respectable in the least. And finally, as with most things, there is another tinge of irony here. These people wanted to shut her idea down so no one could hear it. They wanted it to disappear. So, they took the route of trying to de-platform her and shut her up. What happened? It caught fire, and now everyone knows about Megan Murphy and her case. Everybody's talking about it, and these ideas are coming to light. People like me are telling you that freedom of speech is very important, and what these protesters are doing is actually horrible. How the tables have turned and how their actions played against them, it's something to marvel at. A more productive answer to all of this would have been, we disagree with Megan Murphy. Maybe we'll show up and we'll try to debate her. We'll try to talk about it, we'll ask questions, and we'll figure out what's happening here. If they think that biological men who think they're women now should be included in the feminist movement and whatnot, that's really what the debate's about. Well, let's hear it. I haven't heard any arguments. It's not about the ideas, it's about the outrage. There's also a weird facade here that the mayor himself pointed towards, maybe unwillingly, unknowingly. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. But he said, yeah, we've listened to our community right now. Well, 100 people have showed up and were protesting. Is that the representation of the community? First of all, I think not. They were not voted by anybody. They're not an embodiment of Toronto. They're a small group. They are a loud minority, and he doesn't have nearly enough information to be making claims about what the community wants. I guarantee you a lot of people are sitting down right now thinking, what the hell? This really happened? They were trying to shut her down for that? If this is a sign of where Canada is heading in the coming decades, it really is a frightening thought. We have to bridge the gap and get people to be more tolerant. I agree with that, and that's the crazy part to me. Tolerance is the answer here, but the warriors who are crying for it do not uphold it in the same ways they want it sent to them. It's irony, and it's destructive. So that brings me to the end of today's conversation. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to share and leave a review. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Perry Platform. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.